Hello and welcome to Tuesday's Talking Heads. I'm your host Ashton Colt and today we're going to be discussing social activism involving Black Lives Matter and LGBT rights with my dear friend Asia Gibbs. We'll be right back after this. No matter where they go. No matter how high they soar. They never forget where they learn to fly. Once an eagle, always an eagle. Once an eagle, always an eagle. Once an eagle, always an eagle. Welcome back to the show, and uh, I have here with me my friend Asia Gibbs. Welcome. Hi. <laughs> um, I guess we'll go ahead and start with, um, well, what forms of activism are you involved in? I personally am a large part of LGBT activism, of course, because I am a trans man and I'm bisexual, so it's very important to me that LGBT rights and equality are top priority most of the time. Absolutely, I 100% feel that. Um, I identify as pansexual, so I'm also in LGBTQ activism. Um, and um, like since BLM has been extremely big um, this past summer, even though it started literally like a few years ago, um, I've been more involved with like the social media aspects for the fact of um, like the protests and everything is extremely um, big on my anxiety. And I feel like a lot of people um, think just because if they don't go out and protest or if they don't like actually go out and do whatever they need to do. they're not a part of it. Absolutely. Really. And I feel like that's extremely like disvalidating. And yeah, I, I totally agree. I, I feel like you don't have to, like if, if, especially if you can't, if you're unable to, if you're underage and can't drive or you're um, at work or you know, it, it's just, you know, you, you have the incapability of actually being able to participate. Mm -hmm. I feel like just promoting it on social media or trying to spread the word or doing it just even in your day-to-day -day actions and conversation Absolutely. is plenty for that. Um, mm -hmm. So why exactly is oftentimes these forms of activism important to you? I mean, like both being the LGBTQ and Black Lives Matter? Like what, what is your drive to really be a part of these groups? Um, I feel like my, my drive to be a part of BLM is I feel like as a light-skinned black person, I am often not displayed as a black person. So I feel like a lot of people um, like just think either I am just like an ally, like a quiet ally, because I don't look the part or um, like, I don't know, like people just do not, I feel like I'm not represented as a black woman or a black person that will be supportive in that sense. And same with um, like the LGBTQ, I do not represent, or I don't stereotypically represent myself as a pansexual person. I was about or, to say, you're, like you, you feel like you don't fit the full representation, like uh, the, the gay stereotype. Or absolutely. The transgender stereotype, or oftentimes people think everybody who is part of the LGBT community or even part of Black Lives Matter is an SJW, a social justice warrior, mm -hmm. which is just not true. I mean, activism, I would say, is just searching for equality, uh, a form of equalness in uh, whether it be sexualities as well as race, racial issues. Um, we'll be right back after this. Uh, can't wait to continue this.
Welcome back to part two of this discussion. I'm still here with the lovely Asia Gibbs, but uh, this time around, we're gonna discuss how Black Lives Matter and the LGBT uh, activism both relate very much so, especially going as far back as before Black Lives Matter really had become a thing, and it was the civil rights movement back in the late 1960s, as well as the discussion of Stonewall, which was the first big movement for gay rights. So I think one of the bigger things that not a lot of people know about outside of the community is that some of the first people that threw bricks at Stonewall, which was the biggest protest that has happened in history for the gay rights movement, uh, most of the bricks were first thrown by black trans women and uh, black lesbians and black gay men. Um, how, how influential do you think this is in both to Black Lives Matter as well as the gay rights movement? I think it's crazy influential because like, um, honestly, I was not even educated on Stonewall for about maybe like the past, until like two years ago. Mm -hmm. Like I went to Pride last year and- oh, lucky you. <laughs> oh my goodness, it was so nice. And I was just, my friend was educating me on it. I'm like, I did not know that. Like, and it baffles me that um, how, um, it's kind of covered up almost. Yes, and it baffles me that a lot of like um, black people, regardless of like religion or just how they were raised, are like very um, homophobic to people. But you um, are really supportive of like black rights and rights all together. But you cannot support like LGBTQ rights when black people exactly. were doing this for LGBTQ people. Exactly, um, and I feel like thanks to Stonewall and the civil rights movement in the 60s. I mean, obviously, quite a difference has been made with the legalization of gay marriage and the removal of Jim Crow laws and just the togetherness that has sort of come together. And a lot of people think that the rights movement is mostly over because of that, but in actuality, I, I don't think they realize that it's only just beginning. I mean, consider the protests that have been going on and the fact that Black Lives Matter was only, like you said, formed a few years ago. Um, how much do you feel like you've become a part of this? Like, how much do you think this as a whole has influenced your life specifically? Um, I feel like it's been very influential. Like, when it first started, when, um, like, a couple years ago, I don't think I was really educated on it. I was still in middle school. I was very much so just like, oh, that's sad. But then when all this stuff happened, I don't know why it just felt very home-hitting. And people, I'm from Columbus, Ohio, and people are still getting, you know, shot and killed like almost every other week and you do not hear about it at all so it's very just stressful and like I understand like colorism is for sure a thing and I understand I am a light-skinned black person but I still very much so give off black representation at least a tad bit like um, I worked at Sonic here a couple of months ago and this lady spit on me because of my BLM mask like I've never experienced really? any type of like I was surprised, I was like, dang, like. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm glad to say that I haven't received much hate for my pride that I wear. I mean, I have a Stonewall shirt and I'm obviously wearing a pride mask right now, but mm -hmm. just knowing about that and that people like that are out there and not just in the news, not just on social media, but um, thank you so much for coming on to talk about this. I really appreciate that I could have this lovely discussion with you. And uh, yeah, uh, I guess we'll cut to commercial here. No matter where they go. No matter how high they soar. They never forget where they learn to fly. Once an eagle, always an eagle. Once an eagle, always an eagle. Once an eagle, always an eagle. Welcome back again, and thank you so much for tuning into the show, and thank you, Asia, for coming on the show. Thank to you talk for about having me. I'm very passionate about. Um, we'll be on here next week with Lakin hosting, and I'm not sure what she's doing, but I'm really excited to hear about it. Uh, this has been Tuesday's Talking Heads.